Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cardboard Cave. Here to show you something pretty cool. This has just been out for a few months. It's, it's fairly new. This is a handheld gaming system called the Super Pocket. There are two different versions. I have the Tato version. There's also a Capcom version. This is a handheld gaming system about the size of the Game Boy Color, I would say roughly. And it has 18 preloaded arcade games from Tato. And it also plays Evercade cartridges, which we'll talk about. Now, this is from Hyper Megatech. And really, this is an Evercade product. It does say up here, compatible with Evercade cartridges. So the Evercade, um, I don't remember if I've done a full-on video. I don't think I have yet, which is crazy. I should have done that. It's something I'm definitely going to be talking about on this channel. The Evercade, if you don't know, it's it's been pretty popular. I mean, they've released, oh my goodness, over 50 cartridges or around 50 cartridges at this point. They're right at it. Um, each one having, well, it just depends. Most of them have multiple games, usually from a certain publisher. There's something that ties them all together. But they're actual physical cartridges. The original Evercade was a handheld system that was, you know, shaped, <clears throat> well, like the Nintendo Switch, but a little bit smaller than that. Then they released the Versus, which is an actual system that you can play multiplayer games on an actual TV. It's a, a system that you actually put the cartridges into. And then they released the Evercade, um, oh my goodness, is it VX? I have EX, Evercade EX. I have it and I can't remember exactly what it's called. But it's sort of like the premium handheld. It, it improved upon the original. But it is shaped it's similar in size and shape to the original Nintendo Switch model. Um, maybe a little smaller, but it's similar in size and shape to the Switch. So in other words, the Evercade has never been like a true pocket size console. It's always been, you know, a little bit bigger handheld. And then they released the console version. So this is the first time that an Evercade product, although it doesn't necessarily say it's an Evercade product, but it's the first time an Evercade product has been like Game Boy sized, pocket sized. This, again, has 18 official games that are basically ports of the arcade versions of 18 Taito games. Um built-in, but it also can play the Evercade cartridges, which are roughly $20 a piece. Uh, there's tons of them. That'll be a whole separate video, probably multiple videos. But what is this? Let's look, let's check it out. I just got this a couple days ago. I have played it some, um, ready to give you my thoughts. Is it worth the money? The money's the first thing. $59.99, uh, 60 bucks. So right off the bat, <clears throat> if you're interested in these games, 18 building games for 60 bucks in itself isn't terrible. Not to mention the fact that you have a handheld that can play these cartridges. So in theory, it doesn't, it seems like a pretty good deal to me, but, but we'll see, you know, how's the quality? How does it actually play them? Um, not much to see here. It tells you space invaders, bubble, bubble, Neverland story, or sorry, <laughs> New Zealand story, Rastan. You can see some pictures on the side. <clears throat> And first, this is a cautionary tale. If you care at all about the condition of your packages, Amazon is not the way to go. I mean, how this even got this damaged, it does totally... Look, I mean, come on, Amazon, come on. So how does a package get that damaged? Well, when you throw this and two other objects that aren't even remotely the same shape or size in a box that's twice too big with zero packing material and it just bounces around in the box during shipping. That's how that happens. Um, I did, Amazon will return stuff easily. I decided to keep this. Frankly, this isn't like some special box. You know, if this was an old school game system, you know, um, from Sega or Nintendo or something, then it would matter more to me. It's what's inside. They didn't spend much money on the packaging. It's what's inside that counts in this case. It lists all 18 games. We'll go over that in a moment. Let's just go over what's included here. It says expand your super pocket with 500 plus Evercade games. So spread across roughly 50 cartridges. 
Um, in fact, I can tell you it's 37, 47, uh, plus five, I believe it's, I believe there's 52 currently, if I'm not mistaken, with two more on the way in April. Anyways, it's a lot. 500 plus games though spread across those cartridges. This has an easy mode because these are arcade versions. You can turn on the easy mode right from the main menu. So it'll, it'll default to like the easy setting on all these arcade games. Arcade cart compatible. Rechargeable battery built in, as you'd expect from a modern handheld. So you don't need batteries. It includes the charging cable. It's a USB-C. Regular USB on one side, USB-C on the other. All you need is a brick, any USB charging brick like you use for a phone. So you probably have a bunch of those. 2.8 inch high quality IPS screen. To give you some idea, I think that's roughly the size. It's very close to the size of the Game Boy Advance SP, um, which was sort of my handheld of choice for a long time. It is smaller than the than the own the Evercade um, EX system. It's certainly much smaller than like a Switch screen. Um, but it's, it's comparable to like the Game Boy Advance SP. So to give you an idea there. Four plus hours of play off one charge. All right. So we'll just go and open up my beat up box to show you inside. I have already taken it out because when I saw this package arrive like this, like I got to see if it's even, you know, is the system beat up? It was not. I could tell it was new. It was just poor packaging on Amazon's part. They need to do better. I don't know that they will though. They do sometimes, um, but so inside there's really not much. Um, there's this, which basically just shows you get more Evercade games. It also tells you there's a Capcom version, I believe on here somewhere. Well, no, it doesn't, but that is the Capcom version. It's yellow and blue. <laughs> um, it gives you very simple instructions. Very simple. You can win 10 AVK cartridges, blah, blah, blah. And then it's just cardboard. The charging cable wasn't here. The system's sitting right here. That's it. So again, they did not spend a lot of money on the packaging. And I think that's good because this is a $60 device. And it seems like they put almost all the money into the device itself. Um, so I actually did not mind the fact the packaging is so simple. And uh, since Amazon tore it all to pieces, it gives me a little more freedom to just throw the packaging away, quite frankly. <laughs> Anyways, let's not worry about that right now. I did pick this case up for 15 bucks off Amazon. It's uh, the uh, AN, sorry, ANLOSI. I don't know how to pronounce that. A-E-N-L-L-O-S-I. That's the brand of this case. And it seems like a good case, so I don't mind giving them a free shout out. It's very compact, the size of the case. It's a hard shell, which I appreciate. And inside, here's what you came to see. This is the Super Pocket. And again, I got the Taito version. It's more interesting to me because these are a lot of games that I don't have as much experience with. They have not been ported to a million different systems. So in here in this case, if you decide to pick it up, like I said, USB to USB-C cable, um, it does come with this. You just need a charging brick. Regular USB charger brick. There's plenty of room in here for a couple of Evercade cartridges and the cable. Or you could probably do the brick, the cable, and at least one cartridge. You could probably still fit two cartridges. Um, which isn't bad when you also count the 18 building games. You, you could fit a few cartridges in there, I think. And it holds us very tightly, very snug. So let's go and get it out. It's like a microfiber interior. I like this case. I think it's worth 15 bucks. But here it is. It is very small, you can see. I have a fairly average size man hand. I love this color scheme. I mean, it's probably a matter of opinion. I love the color scheme. It says Taito Edition right there. I say Taito, you might say Taito. I've never looked up how to properly pronounce it. I think I actually used to say Taito. I don't know why I started saying Taito. It's probably Taito. Anyways, Hyper Megatech. Select button, start button, A, B, Y, X, a menu button, D-pad. And then on the back, although most games thankfully don't require this, there are L and R buttons, R1, R2, and L1 and R2. Some games require that. 
and I don't know that that would be the most <laughs> convenient thing. Um, but for the most part, you're not going to be playing games that require that on this thing. None of the building games require that as far as I can tell. Um, and most of the Evercade games are, you know, like eight bit and 16 bit style games. So very few are going to require those buttons. There might be a few. Um, but anyways, I'm going to tell you first thing that I noticed besides that I love the way it looks. I love the size of it. The other first thing I noticed was it just feels good in the hand. The finish on this thing just feels good. It does not feel like those preloaded handheld systems that are out there a dime a dozen. It doesn't really feel like those. Um, I think it feels good. In fact, I'm going to say it feels at least as good as the $150 Evercade EX system, which is like their premium handheld system. It's just as far as purely feeling in the hands. Now, the screen's nowhere near as big. It's not as impressive in some ways, for sure. But as far as sheer just feel of it, I think it feels great. This is a fake cartridge. You'll take this out to put in an Evercade cartridge. Uh, volume down and up here. And I actually like the fact that unlike so many systems right now, it actually has an on and off switch. Instead of just a button you have to hold down for several seconds, there's an actual on and off switch. Uh, headphone jack, um, USB-C for charging. That's pretty much it. Just some screw holes up there. It just feels good in the hand. I don't, yeah, I don't know how else to say that. I love the color in person. I really do. And it just feels good. Let's go and turn it on here. So right now we don't have a cartridge in, but there's 18 games pre-built in. And I don't know how well this will show up on the phone. Probably not very well. I will turn the volume down in a moment. But I do want to say, there's pretty good sound out of this one speaker. Much louder than I expected. Let me see if it's all the way up even. It wasn't. All right, there. Pretty dang impressive sound for such a small speaker. But I'm going to turn it way down. And let's just look at the games included. And I'm going to tell you, this screen looks very, very good in person. It is definitely washed out and blurry on my iPhone. But in person, you'll have to take my word for it. It looks very good. Bubble Bobble. Kadash. So Bubble Bobble, we covered the NES version. This is the arcade version. Um, on Retro Bliss, on our podcast, we covered it. Kadash, never played. Chack and Pop, I've heard of it. Never played it. Don Doko Don, that one's new to me. Elevator Action is a classic football champ. Uh, I played a little bit of this. I don't really know anything or care anything about, you know, uh, football, soccer. But this is pretty fun. This is like the NFL Blitz of, of soccer games. Growl is a pretty cool beat-em-up that I'd never played. Kiki Kaka, never played it. Liquid Kids, I've heard great things, never played it. See, that's why I love this title collection. These are arcade games that I have very little experience with. Operation Wolf. Now, that one I know. Puzzle Bobble, I love. This is the arcade version of Puzzle Bobble, which is the puzzle version of Bubble Bobble. Restan, I've played a console version of that. This is the arcade version. Space Invaders, of course, the arcade version. Obviously played that. Here's the only game on here that is not the arcade version. I think this is the Sega Genesis version of Space Invaders 91. So it's actually, I guess, 17 arcade games and one Genesis game. I guess they just decided to put that on there just to have another version of Space Invaders. Fairyland Story. The Legend of Kage. Again, I played the NES version, I believe, of this. Uh, this is the arcade version. The New Zealand Story. Volified. And there we go. That's all 18 included. If you pull up, push the menu button. I love that. It's this smooth, isn't it? I love the bub and bob there. And go down to Evercade. If you have a cartridge in, it'll tell you here. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. A is no cartridge inserted. All right. And there's also settings here. Let's see. You got original aspect ratio, pixel perfect, full screen. You could put on scan lines, strong or subtle. That's your display options. Sound. You can change the volume levels. 
language, difficulty. So I have it on normal, but you can actually put it on easy to make all the arcade games easier. All right. Let's press the menu button. Go back to Taito. I'm going to show you just a little bit of a game or two here. And then I'm going to show you how the Evercade games play on it, the cartridges. Let's pull up Growl, because this is a game I'd never played, but it looks like a blast. Um, oh, and one thing about this collection. Ooh, I saw my reflection there. That's ugly. <laughs> one thing about this collection. I don't think that any of these games, I'm pretty positive that none of these games are on any of the Evercade cartridges. So that makes this handheld a pretty good deal to me. Insert coin, select is the coin button. Push button. Let's select a player. Let's give all the story. <laughs> Drop dead, you scum. Again, this is not, an, I know, I realize this is not, oh, the ladies are going to find me. This is not an ideal way to play something like this, um, or to show you how to play it. Recorded through a phone screen. But you, again, just take my word for it, as much as you want to, at least. This is a good looking screen. This does not look like a budget screen at all. Very good looking. The only complaint I can imagine anybody coming up with for what it is for the screen is that it, it's not it's not big. I mean, it's it's like Game Boy Advance SP size, like I said. Um, so I think for certain games, you're going to want it to be a little bigger. I got a machine gun now. Sorry, I just realized there's a glare there. I'm trying to play the game, kind of forgot you guys were watching through there. But you can see not only does the game play fine, hopefully you can tell even recorded through there that, that the colors are great. Again, they're a little washed out on my phone screen recording. But in person, the colors are great. Um, and although I have it turned right now, the sound is really good. It moves smoothly. Yeah. All right, let's pick out, well, let's listen to the sound a little better on this game. The viewing angle on this screen is fantastic. I know you can't tell that on the phone, or at least I don't think you can, but there is no bad viewing angle that's reasonable at all. Like you can have this at any angle and it's a fine viewing angle. Oh, you can also save. There are one, two, three, four, five, six save slots. It's super easy. You just hit it right there. It'll save it. You can load your saves. You can check out the controls. I don't think you can change them here, but you can, you can check them out. You can change all the displays if you want the aspect ratios changed. So pretty much anything there you would need. And let's check out a more classic game. I guess you don't get much more classic than Space Invaders. Right. So yeah, you can, <laughs> I can't really see what I'm doing because I'm trying to look through the phone, <laughs> trying to look through the phone and so you can see the screen. But again, hopefully you can tell it's, it's the arcade version of the game. I need to turn the volume down a little bit. It is what it should be. Let's see, what else can we check out? Check out one more of these and then we'll try putting a cartridge in. There's a bubble bobble, the dash. Check out Liquid Kids. It's just a game I've never played at all. That's a satisfying sound. 
The colors on this game are phenomenal. Of course, it's an arcade game, but it looks, the colors look like a, like a really well-made Saturn game or something, like a 2D Saturn game. I don't have any idea how to play this game, but I've, you obviously, well, it's called Liquid Kid, so you're obviously throwing water. Oops. Well, it's easy to die, which is not surprising, because again, it is an arcade game. <laughs> I've heard some really good things about this game. I just never played it myself. Go in. Um, oh, okay, there's a rope there. Looks like a water gun. Oop, there's spikes there. All right, you get the idea. Should we do one more um, puzzle bobble? Why not? Again, oh, I don't think I've mentioned. I love the way the system itself feels. I think the buttons feel great. Um, the only thing I've heard anybody complain about, I think, with this system is some people complain about the D-pad. I don't know. For none of, I've heard other people say they love the D-pad. For the games I played on, I think the D-pad is great. I have no complaints. It is a um, like, what do you call those? A circle D-pad? It's not like an NES controller that's just up, down, left, and right. You can press in different directions. But it's been more than accurate enough for all the games I've tried on it. So, I'm sure you're going to eventually come across a game that the D-pad is not ideal. That's always going to happen with these kinds of systems that are like compilation systems. Because you got games, you know, if you have these cartridges, you got games from all kinds of different systems. Anyways, here we go. Bubble Bobble. I don't know why I put that there. That was really, that was really dumb. That's all right. I can still take care of it. It plays exactly like you'd expect it to. There's no complaints at all. Yeah, it's bubble bobble. It sounds like bubble bobble. Bubble bobble looks like bubble bobble. I like the D-pad. I like the buttons. Um. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try taking this out, which I, I'll be honest, I've actually not done before. <laughs> there it goes. It's pretty tight, but I guess it needs to be. And this is basically just like to make the system look better and a dust protector. It's not a real cartridge, obviously. Oh, there's an advertisement in the QR code to get more games though. So obviously one of the things that drew me to the Evercade to begin with was the fact that it's physical cartridges. This is the renovation collection, which I think is cool because just like this, there's a lot of games on here that just don't get ported. They don't get ported to other things, but we're not reviewing these, but each one does have an instruction manual with information on each game and a physical cartridge for about 20 bucks. I think they're a good deal. They remind me of Game Gear cartridges, at least how I remember Game Gear cartridges. Or maybe Atari Lynx cartridges. I never owned a Lynx, but I think maybe they're similar to that. So here we go, the renovation collection one. Fits right in, smooth. Now we pull the menu back up. We can still keep playing our Taito games, Taito games. But if we press the menu button and go down to Evercade, there we go. They pull right up. And there's just all kinds of games on this cartridge that are like shoot 'em up games, action games. I think it's a great cartridge. A lot of, if you like space shooters, there's a lot of space shooters on here. Um, if you don't, this may not be a great cartridge for you. But there's a, there's a variety of games. Let's try... Uh, Soul Dees. I know it's a shoot 'em up. It's, it's fast. It's got a lot of movement. You know, that should help us see how the screen holds up for that kind of thing. <clears throat> I 
I, I'm just going to tell you, I mean, this screen looks great. I mean, I'm, I'm almost 40 years old. I, uh, I definitely do not mind the bigger screen on the EX system. But this is cool because it's a true pocket size system. It's very portable. Even in that case that I got, it's very travel friendly. It's very portable. The fact that it has 18 Taito games built in, that, um, wow, I'm just dying like crazy. That most of, or a lot of which I don't have any experience with or don't have on other collections. I'm <laughs> really doing terrible. Anyways, <clears throat> it has a lot of games I don't have on other collections. <clears throat> Adds to the value of this a lot. Yeah, moves very smoothly. Just try, oops, just try one more on this system. Again, you can save. Let's try a very colorful game. Dino Land. <clears throat> oh, this is more of a pinball game. See, <laughs> I have not played a lot of these Evercade collections a lot. I forgot this was a bit of a pinball game. Interesting. I didn't even watch the ball properly. Well, I love pinball. I forgot that's what this was, though. Yeah, there's no question the system is handling it just fine. And speaking of handling it just fine, what I want to do now, and you can also save and load on these cartridges as well. That's cool. What I want to do now is just going to pull this out. And you can do that with these Evercade cartridges. It doesn't hurt to just do it that way. This is a collection that, to me, for me personally and my taste in gaming, is probably one of the worst Evercade collections. But I got it because I'm a collectioning collectionist fool. And the reason I want to try it is because it has a 3D racing game, Hardcore 4x4. And I want to see if this little Super Pocket system can handle that. Um, so we're going to try it. This is the Gremlin Collection 1. The reason this is probably possibly the weakest collection for me <clears throat> is it has, well, Zool. Zool's a platformer. But then it's got Actua Soccer, which I think is like more of a sim soccer game. Then it's got Premier Manager 97, which is like a soccer management sim. So two of the six games I'll probably never play. <laughs> and it's got a puzzle game, Utopia, the creation of a nation. That's like um, like a real-time strategy game, I think. So realistically, Hardcore 4x4, I, I don't think I've ever heard that that was a great racing game. I do love that they print the names of these cartridges. But that's one I will check out. And then Zool. And that's probably about all that I'll really play on this. Utopia I'll check out. I just, I don't know if I have the patience for it. Let's check out two games on this. Let's check out Zool because it's a fast, colorful platformer. Uh, probably too fast because it came out during the era of Sonic and it was trying to probably be fast to the, to the detriment of the gameplay a little bit. Um... But it's very colorful. We're just going to check out this one. Good grief, it's fast. I have played this before, and everything just moves too fast. Like It's trying so hard to be Sonic that I think it would have been a better game if it didn't move so stupid fast. <laughs> I mean, it's still a pretty fun game from what I remember. But it, I think it would be a better platformer if it didn't. Chubba Chups. If it didn't move so fast. I can't even tell what's happening at the time. He's like a ninja though. Oh my goodness. Alright, forget it. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know how you're supposed to dodge some of these enemies that move so fast. You can't. That's the answer. You can't. Maybe a massive trial and error. That's the only way. I mean, Sonic had some cheap deaths, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> but they also... They also were aware of how fast the game was. 
and weren't quite as cheap with enemy placement, I don't think. But it's a good looking game. It moves fast. It certainly shows again how good the screen is on this little thing. This is not a budget, cheap screen. It's, it's nice. And again, the viewing angles are great. All right, the last game I want to try though <clears throat> is Hardcore 4x4 to see if this little thing can handle a, a powerful 3D racing game. I think this was a PlayStation 1 game. Um, pretty sure it was. Again, every game I played though, the controls just feel right. I've had zero complaints. English. Come on now. Loading, please wait. I bet you it loads faster than it did on the PlayStation. The PS1 had some long loading times. <laughs> I don't know. I'm actually going to use it back up. Confirm. There it goes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's just go to start race. That music is rad. Part of me wonders, do they keep those loading screens in <clears throat> just to be authentic? <laughs> Here we go. Well, this game is what it is, but I can already tell it runs just fine. And I think it controls just as well as it would have on the PlayStation D-pad. Oh, that's not part of the track. All right. Somehow I'm still in first. <clears throat> it is really hard to tell it's part of the track and what isn't. That looks like part of the track. They did that on purpose. That's ridiculous. They had to have done that on purpose. Ouch. There's probably a nitro boost button. I'd like to figure that out. Uh. Oh, there's a view button. Inside view. Oh, there's a steering wheel view. Oh my goodness. It's making you sick, it's making me a little sick. But that's just the game. <laughs> Nothing to do with the handheld. I'm trying to find if there's a natural boost button or anything. I guess not. So the R2 button back here is the horn. Again, I don't think there's too many games on these Evercade cartridges that make heavy use. I don't know what the reverse button is. <laughs> there's not a lot of Evercade games that make heavy use of the... Um... <clears throat> the trigger buttons. But I do think control-wise, that would be the one weakness of this system. Just because it's a, a small Game Boy, like Game Boy Color-shaped system, you don't really have room for those trigger buttons except on the back. And they're not very convenient. But they're good enough like for just a camera button or like a menu button. But if there are any Evercade games that heavily use them, I would probably just avoid playing those particular games on this system, honestly. Anyways, okay, it runs just fine. It, it's, yeah, there's no problems. The game is not great. Okay, yeah. I think that gives you enough of an idea. The menus are so smooth. And you can switch back to the Tato, Tato game so easily. I think that tells you enough, all you really need to know. Um, <clears throat> from my perspective, let's just review top to bottom. All the things you would care about for something like this. Let's get the negatives out of the way first. You see the size of it. That should tell you. This is the size of it. This is the size of my adult man hands on the buttons. Um, you know, these L1 and R1 buttons are on the back here. Pretty much the only place they could put them. Um, this is the size of the screen. 
you know. <clears throat> so there's going to be limitations because of the size of it. You know, if you're getting older like me, you may not want to play games with tons of text on this thing. Um, <clears throat> but for the big bulk of games included on this built in and on these cartridges, um, they're like arcadey, fast paced style games, a lot of them. I think the size, for what it's trying to be, the size is perfect. I don't think it feels silly tiny, but it's definitely pocket sized. And like I said, even in this protective case, that'd have to be a big pocket, but it's still very travelable. Travelable, bubble, bubble, bubble. <laughs> Anyways, for me, from what I tested out the other day and what I tested out just now, um, there's a few games on here I played a little longer. I've not had any issues with the controls. I think the buttons feel good. I think the D-pad feels good. Um, the menus are quick. So controls, good. Buttons feel good. The finish of the system itself feels good. I love the way it looks. Now, it's gaudy. I mean, bold maybe is the word. But I, I don't know. I love the control scheme. Would I want to buy a $300 Nintendo Switch in this color scheme? I don't know. I'd have to think about it. But for a little pocket system for 60 bucks, you know, the price of one new video game, really. I like the colors. I like the way it looks. I think it feels like a quality product. I'm actually surprised how much I like the way it feels. The screen. Again, it's only 2.8 inches. But it looks great. It looks... If I held it up next to the EX system, which is, again, a $150 system. It does come with two pack-in cartridges, though but it's still $150. That is a really good screen. It's, it's better than this one. But I couldn't tell you that just looking at this. I can only tell you that because I've seen people compare them side by side. Um, You know what? I should have done this sooner. But I'm going to sit this right here for a minute, let you soak it in. And I'm going to pick up whatever handheld system I can find over there just to compare the size a little bit for you. All right. Unfortunately, and I do regret this. I sold my Game Boy Advance SP years ago. Um, but a few systems I have just to compare it to. Here's the EX in its case. <clears throat> oh, look, same brand. I guess I like that brand. <clears throat> Not a sponsor. The EX is a very nice system. Oh, man, I'm an idiot. It's EXP. <laughs> I'm not even calling it the right thing. The EXP. It's a nice system, but you can see the size difference. I mean, it's not even comparable, really. But, make no mistake. If you want a way to play all these Evercade cartridges, this is a more deluxe experience. For me, i become an Evercade cartridge collector. So for me, it made sense to have basically another way to play them. I love the form factor here. And I am actually excited about the 18 built-in Tato games. So for me, that justified it. But if you're only going to get one or the other, you know, you probably do need to seriously look at the EXP. It's got um, a bigger screen, a really nice screen. Um, it's just a more deluxe system. The L and R buttons, you know, are... For games that do require, they're very comfortable. Everything about it is, is a little more premium. Though the finish is very similar. Like, I can tell they use a similar finish. It's a heavier system. You can tell it just has more going on. So there's those compared. Let's, uh, let's see. What else do we have here? A DS. A lot. Oh, this is actually a 3DS. All right, so 3DS is a little taller than the pocket. About the same thickness, maybe. Of course, folded open. Um, the screen size, I would say, is comparable to the smaller screen, probably. 
on the 3DS. And here's one that probably is going to be useful to most of you, but it's a system that I have. <laughs> Here is the Neo Geo Pocket Color, which is a really cool little system. And actually the most comparable in size to the Super Pocket. Oh, let's just drop it. There we go. All right. Yeah, pretty comparable in size to the Super Pocket, obviously oriented differently. Um, Screen-wise, the Super Pocket definitely has a little bigger screen because if you see that black bevel around there, the actual usable screen is bigger on the Super Pocket. If I had to guess, if this is 2.8, this might be 2.5 maybe. It's not that far off. But the actual screen is bigger on the Super Pocket. Not, not bigger than most <laughs> handheld game systems today, but, but uh, like I said, it's about the same as the Game Boy Advance or Game Boy Advance SP. So yeah, there you go. There's a few systems to compare it to. So my overall thoughts. All right. To be clear, it doesn't do anything that the um, EXP system doesn't do. It costs less. It has 18 building games. Um, but make no mistake, it's not, you know, the screen size is nowhere near as big. Um, if you've only got one way to play your Evercade games, either this or the VS system, the actual console, <clears throat> those are the ways to go. For me though, I think this is a lovely alternative. Um, and I'll admit maybe if I didn't have all these Evercade cartridges already, I wouldn't have been as excited about it. Um, but just having another way to play them. Uh, if I want to take something for a day trip or something <laughs> or to sit on the toilet with, it's probably going to be this one. A, it's less expensive. I feel like it's less likely that I'll drop it than this one because it's just the size and, and handheldness of it. Um, and it does still have a great looking screen and it feels great in the hand and it does all the things you want it to do. So... If you get this, I think you know what you're getting, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed because you already know it's smaller than this one. Like, you know what it is when you get it, and I think it does it great. I'm very pleased with this. I'll be honest. Um, Like, I have no negatives, honestly. The uh, For me, I'm not going to buy the Capcom version. That's overkill. <laughs> like, I don't need two of them. And those Capcom games have been just available on different compilations. In fact... A lot of them, I think, are, are, are the ones that are built into this system. I should mention that. This system had Capcom games built in, and it came with... Did it come with two cartridges or just one? It came with one cartridge, yes. It came with the IRAM cartridge. It came with the IRAM physical cartridge, including box, manual, everything. And it came with downloaded, included Capcom games that are exclusively, you know, already loaded. So... It does come with some packed-in value as well. Um, so, in other words, for me, the Capcom one was not that exciting because I already have most of those games on here. These Tato games are not on Evercade cartridges or built into this machine. So, that definitely adds to the value of this, for sure. So, having 18 Tato games, actually, most of which seem to be quality and I'm actually interested in playing. That's the thing. It's not just 18 trash games. They pick some cool ones. And ones that haven't been put on a million different things. This is a tight fit in this case. I think maybe face down is the way to do it. Because that's like a microfiber cloth. It shouldn't scratch anything. Anyways. Uh, let's see. I guess that's the last thing I could do here. Let's put a couple of cartridges in here. I'll be honest. I, I think you're going to want to choose between the cartridges or the, um, the charging cable. Because by the time you put a power brick in here. That's going to take up some room. I'm trying to see what the best way to put them in would be. Probably that way. So you can fit two stacked up there. Um, I mean, if you don't care, they're not hidden behind the netting. There is room. Yeah, there's room. You can fit a small power brick there. There's two cartridges here. There's the cable. You could put a power brick there. Or vice versa, you can arrange it differently. 
So you could make it work, or you could probably put four or possibly even six Evercade cartridges. At least four. Um, yeah, so I think the case is pretty good. And I really like the system. So there we go. That is the Evercade. Well, sorry. That is the Super Pocket. This is the Tato version. Made by Hyper Mega Tech. Plays Evercade games. <clears throat> I would rate it for 60 bucks, 18 building games. They play flawlessly. They're the arcade versions, which is great. I think the controls feel great. I think the system feels great. For the price point of 60 bucks with the 18 games included, which to me is probably like a, I don't know, at least a $40 value right there. Being the arcade versions and being such good ROMs, such good versions of them, that's at least a $40 value. I'm going to give the thing... Eight and a half out of 10. Eight and a half out of 10. Like there's there's no reason to give it below that. I'm very impressed with it. Um, in fact, I don't even know what it could do better without just being something entirely different. You know, if they just make it bigger, well then just get this, you know. <laughs> For what it is, I don't think there's much they could have done better. So eight and a half out of 10, um, maybe, maybe bump it on a nine. It's just, I'm very pleased with it. It's very... Very little I could see that should have been done differently. And I even love the color scheme. So there you go. The Tato Super Pocket. Do not confuse this with your with your other cheap knockoff handhelds that have quote unquote hundreds of built-in games, none of which are licensed, most of which are terrible. These are 18 quality arcade classics. Well, 17 arcade classics plus the Sega Genesis game. Um, and a handheld that feels great and can play a whole host of Evercade cartridges as well. There you go. Thanks for checking out The Cardboard Cave.